Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of using the chain rule to make a derivative calculation simpler. In particular, we're going to consider finding partial partial x, so let's find partial partial f partial x if f of x and y is the cosine of 5 tangent inverse of y over x plus the natural log of the square root of x squared plus y squared. The first thing to observe about this function is it looks incredibly messy to do the x derivative of it because there's inverse tangents, there's cosines, there's natural logs, there's square roots, a whole bunch of messy things. However, if we put this function to polar coordinates, what do we see? If we put this function to polar coordinates, we see that f of r theta as a function in polar coordinates is going to be the cosine of 5, and the tangent inverse is just going to be theta, and then plus the natural log of r. So the function is much simpler in polar coordinates. So let's change our problem into a polar problem. So we have a function f of x and y, and I want to think of x and y as functions of r's and thetas as functions, so x and y are functions of r and theta, r and theta, or we can equally well think of f as a function of y, as a function of r and theta, and r and theta depend on x and y, x and y. So one of these two configurations will help us solve the problem. Namely, well, let's select down the chain rule. So by the chain rule, says that partial f partial x is partial f partial r partial r partial x plus partial f partial theta partial theta partial x. So it looks like we're going to use this configuration down over here. So I have to find these derivatives, these partial r partial x partial theta partial x. And so to do that, what we'll do is we're going to use this configuration. So let's use implicit differentiation to figure this out. We know that x is equal to r cosine theta, so r cosine theta is equal to our x, and our y is going to be r sine theta. So what I can do is I can take the derivative of these equations with respect to x. If I do the derivatives of the equations with respect to x, so if I do d by dx of these equations, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 1 over here is equal to partial r partial x cosine theta, and then minus r sine theta partial theta partial x by the chain rule. And I'm going to get 0 is equal to what? Is equal to partial r partial x sine theta. And then plus r cosine theta partial theta partial x. So these are what I'm going to need in this problem. So I'm going to try to solve these equations for partial r partial x and partial theta partial x. Well, how can we do that? We can do that by a number of different ways. So what I can do is I can take this first equation over here and multiply the top equation. Well, let's look at this bottom equation over here. If we multiply the top equation by cosine, so I get cosine of theta is equal to partial r partial x cosine squared of theta, and then minus r sine theta cosine theta partial theta partial x, and multiply the bottom equation by sine of theta. So 0, that would be a 0 over there because there's nothing over there. So 0, 0 is equal to partial r, partial x, and then I'm uh, multiplying this by sine, so I'm going to have a sine squared theta, sine squared theta, and then plus r sine theta, cosine theta, d theta, dx. So adding these equations together, what do we see? If we add these equations together, the partial theta, partial x terms are going to cancel out, and we're going to have partial r, partial x, times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, is equal to just cosine of theta, cosine of theta. So that says that partial r partial x is cosine of theta. So we just found partial r partial x. Now the next thing to find is partial theta partial x. I can use either one of these equations. So if I take this top equation over here, what will we see? We'll see that 1 is equal to partial r partial x, which is going to be cosine. So this is going to be cosine squared of theta. And then minus r sine of theta partial theta partial x. Okay, so that says that 1 minus cosine squared theta is minus r sine theta, uh, d theta dx. And so, of course, this is sine squared, so this is going to be a sine squared of theta is negative r sine theta d theta dx. One of the sides is going to cancel out, and we see that d theta dx, so d theta dx, will be equal to what? Will be equal to a sine of theta over r with a negative sign. Okay, So we found both of those expressions by implicitly differentiating. And so now we can go back to our chain rule. And what will our chain rule tell us? So our chain rule is going to tell us that partial f partial x, therefore, is partial f partial f partial r. And then partial r partial x is going to be a cosine theta, so times cosine theta. And then plus partial f partial theta 
times the quantity y, times the quantity negative sine theta over r. Okay, good. So now for this function, what is partial f partial r? So partial f partial x in terms of r and theta is going to be, well, the r derivative of this function is just going to be a 1 over r cosine theta. And then I'm going to have a plus partial f partial theta is going to be a negative sine of 5 theta times 5 times what? Times a negative sine theta over r. Negative sine theta over r. Okay? And so if we simplify this, what do we have? We have that this whole thing is just going to be a what? It's going to be a 1 over r and then a cosine of theta minus 5 sine theta sine 5 theta. And so this is the x derivative in polar coordinates. And we can, of course, we can switch back, right? We can say that the x derivative, if we change back to x and y, is going to be 1 over the square root of x squared plus y squared times the quantity cosine of tangent inverse of y over x minus 5 tangent sine of tangent inverse of 5 over x. So I'll put a sine over here. Sine of tangent inverse of y over x. And then that's going to be multiplied by this sine of 5 times this. So that's times sine of 5 tangent inverse of y over x. So by changing this problem into polar coordinates, I was able to sort of quickly do the derivatives. And the advantage of this is that these, far, these partial derivatives and polar coordinates are well known. And so once we have this sort of a formulation sort of committed to memory or committed to some formula sheet, the derivatives and polar coordinates become very easy. Thank you very much.